Hello again and welcome to another tutorial in camera and lens repair and uh, this um, I will con simply continue with my my Canon FD100 2.8 SSC uh, because I would like to show you how you can fix the uh, if the uh, focus ring was very stiff it would be the way I could um, think about make it it's not so hard but we need to do some well something uh, in the process <clears throat> now uh, the focus ring is quite stiff as I think so I will re-grease it or re-loop with um, with some uh, great tin uh, from Japan Hobby Tool which I like really good. It, I think it's a good grease. Um, they also have a great 30, but I think, th I mean, this is the, the most liked uh, grease. So, um, <clears throat> but to come into it and clean the helicoids uh, in here, uh, there are some things we need to take care of. The tiny pin here, this one here with a tiny spring on it it's the one that goes through the hole if we look here on the back it goes into that little hole here and it's a kind of a lock pin um, so when move the the uh, bridge ring uh, where did it went you can see it's here <clears throat> this tiny hole that this little pin go through I mean almost so something like that and um, yeah it has to sit there again so I will simply show how you fully take apart the whole uh, focus uh, assembly remember <clears throat> There is a um, aperture ring here that uh, where there are two small ball bearing, one on each side with a tiny spring, also two of them. And to actually get the aperture ring off, we need, need to take this bar, which is held in place by two screws. <coughs> Uh, there's no need for setting any mark uh, because it can only sit that way there's one small I mean short spring in one end and there is a longer one in the other end so And then it will just fall into my hand. And it has to sit like this. Now, now it's possible to actually take off the, the uh, aperture ring itself. There's no need for taking off this uh, part here. But uh, keep hand over it when you lift out the aperture ring so it will prevent anything from flying around um, it could be that <laughs> I mean it should be possible you can see one tiny steel ball here and there's probably something over here on the other side if I set it to the green ring, the green uh, O here could be, yeah, here we have the other one. And it, I think it should be possible to actually lift out, <coughs> but uh, not really. 
we'll have to press in the small steel bowl here and move the aperture ring. And then it should be, as I did earlier, uh, just lift it up. Um, hmm, let's see. Yeah, you have to press in this pin and then lift it out and hopefully this is how it looks. It's the lock ring that actually lock here on this pin. You can see on the other side of this one there is on the underside there is a small tiny pin and this hole here is actually lock the aperture ring in place. It's quite dirty as I see. Now <clears throat> the two tiny steel bolts is also here and there is even a just put them on here so we know where it is. So and of course the little spring need to come out and the other one they are the same so there is no you cannot put it wrong <laughs> so get off so now so we have the naked um, the naked focusing assembly. <clears throat> so now I will simply uh, unscrew the three screws in here, there, there and there. But before doing so, <clears throat> we should set a mark in here. It's important since there is no repair manual for this lens. I haven't seen it. So sent in here there is a gap. You can see there. Set a mark around it in the edge here. And you could also set one in the middle and set it on the uh, focusing ring here and there. So you know exactly position of the focusing ring itself. And then we can just unscrew it. So there. Out with that. And then we can just lift out the focusing ring itself. This is how it looks. Nothing really special, but there is a lot of <clears throat> there is a lot of oil in here. It seems pretty wet. Of yeah, um, grease that is moving around. <clears throat> so this is the actual focusing system. It's quite stiff. So this is the stopper uh, for each end. And before we actually move anything of those parts here, we simply set a mark here. I make a scratch here on the side. And we also make another one here. Because this, this bar has to sit there, so the stop is correct in each end. So we begin to set it at infinity, which is the shortest distance. And then <clears throat> we simply measure uh, how is the distance here. <clears throat> And we could do it up here, where the uh, index mark is, so we have a kind of a reference. And also a good thing is, 
it's set to infinity at the moment. Set a mark here uh, on the brass ring, which is in line with the index mark. You will also set it on the inner helicoid, the inner tube, so the two are in line at infinity. And just for showing how you can do it, uh, we simply measure the uh, the distance between the back here <coughs> and the um, actual brass ring. And as we can see here, I make my notes, which is good. <coughs> the outer helicoid is, I mean, yeah, um, 32.46 at infinity, which is actually the situation here. Now, uh, the inner helicoid is um, 32.86 at infinity, so we can just measure it here, the same, and uh, it will be something like that. So I measure the outer, I mean the inner ring here, to the back. That's what I actually should end up with when I uh, assemble the whole thing again. So, to actually get the uh, disassemble the two helicoids, <clears throat> we need to take out the key, the focusing key in here. There is one here, and there is another one here. Another type is a more flexible thing, so I think it would uh, uh, make it easier to make a smooth <coughs> uh, if one is binding a little. Now, I set a mark here on one of the key, just make a scratch in here, and on the inside here, make a scratch too. Because this pin has to sit here, and the other one has to sit over here. What will happen if you interchange them, I don't know, but uh, now we have a starting point. So. The, to get the to separate the helicoids, I uh, think it's most easy to take one helicoid at a time. So I will simply uh, unscrew the two focusing key, and um, which I will show you. I use a screwdriver, which is have a uh, I have grinded. In a, I mean, it's pretty white for this, <clears throat> but I have also grinded to fit in the bigger screw head with a very narrow gap, uh, screw gap, I mean, <laughs> for the screwdriver. And then I have a good grip on it. So out for that. And the other one. And we can just take out this key. So, the other one. And so, out there. Come on, little fellow. So, oh, not so magnetic. <laughs> so there, and out with the other key. Just use my dentist tool to lift it up a little, and it's free. So. Now I can actually unscrew the inner helicoid. I have my reference mark up here, which is the index mark, or the, the brass helicoid. So now I can actually move this one. 
since I have set a mark here, I know where I should end up, where I uh, assemble the helicoids again. But I have also made some notes here. Um, I will say the inner helicoid turns almost one revolution and it come off at around 11 o'clock. I will say if we point this up to 12, I will turn this um, and my mark is here and I will fully turn it up to here. So when it comes off, I will say there, just to show it again. My, my beginning point, <coughs> turn it, and um, I have set a mark up here when it comes off. So it be, should be something like 11 o'clock compared to the very top here. So I turn it and when the helicoid comes off it's where it should there. And then you should set a mark here where the uh, two helicoids separate because there are multi starting point here around and uh, if you are not <laughs> I mean familiar with the helicoids uh, you should set marks around now to the other the brass helicoid I will do the exact same so I will loosen the uh, I mean unscrew the this bar here the stop bar or whatever name it has <coughs> there are three tiny screws and since I also have a mark here um, in line here I can just move it as I will uh, do uh, without any problems and I have also the mark here on each side. So now I can just do so off that, take off this bar here. See, I also set a mark up here, but uh, this is really hardened steel. I think it's really hard steel, so I could not set any scratch on it. So now the helicoid is free and as I wrote down here the outer I mean the it as I see it the outer helicoid turns a bit over one and a half revolution and then off at around five o'clock. It will say in reference to the index mark here it should come off down here somewhere uh, after um, after one and a half revolution. So I have to turn this way. It will say one and it will come off down here. <clears throat> there and it's off so it's actually pretty close to this gap uh, to this uh, part here and uh, we can just try to put it on again it can sometimes be a problem to fiddle with the Helicoids. And there it is. I am at the same place again. So I will just take it off again. And there it off. So this is how it looks.
and now it's time to clean the focus helicoid with lighter fluid so see you sooner okay I uh, have just cleaned the, the uh, focusing system and I mean the focusing helicoids and uh, then we are going to assemble the whole thing again I will use the as I thought earlier um, I mean tell earlier <laughs> I will use a grade 10 maybe it's uh, too soft maybe it's too hmm yeah I don't know I will just try um, and everything looks nice and clean like almost new I mean, <laughs> So uh, we'll just, um, I mean, assemble the uh, the the yeah helicoy system, <laughs> and uh, I think I will begin with the outer the brass ring here, and then connect the inner uh, sooner. So <clears throat> we need some. Uh, grease and it will not be much since there is uh, actually I mean this lit there is, I mean it's difficult to see but you can see there is a little and I think it will be enough um, and I will use a fine mega brush and to make it easier to apply And simply spread the grease around. The really fine threads in here uh, compared to many other lenses. And maybe it's enough, maybe it's too much, uh, but I will simply put in the uh, the inner helicoid, the brass helicoid, and give it some movement, and then um, wipe away the rest of it. So <clears throat> I have my mark here where the thread comes off. Here, if we look here, the index mark, and around five o'clock. Um, I have to put my uh, brass helicoid on, then put it in and give it some good movement back and forth. Wow, it feels much better. <laughs> and then take it off again. Where did my mark go? Um, And you'll see the helicoids has actually spread the grease around here so there isn't any too much well you can just use a cutting butt to wipe, wipe away if there is any too much grease there's no need to <laughs> clean and loop and then everything has to be taken apart sooner so this is why we actually wipe away <coughs> some of the the rest of it and we can just do it here too so and there isn't not much left so that's fine then catch the mark, I mean find the marks, put the helicoid on, click, okay there it is, can some, it can sometimes be a little tricky, and then we will find out is it correct or not. Because 
if I have taken the wrong uh, thread in here, you see the threads are in this case, yeah, f much finer than the inner here, which is really, yeah, there's much, a lot of space between. So then I will measure how long should it be? Well, let's see if it's there. That's just the outer and it should be something like um, if I'm there, it should be okay. So there, yeah. And as you can see here, <coughs> where are my notes, uh, the outer helicoid is thirty-two point forty-six millimeter, and if I measure here, well. Uh, we will actually end up uh, something like there. So that's actually the correct thread I found, which is really going much better. Now, then I can actually loop the inner helicoid and do the exact same thing. Maybe there's a little too much. We'll see. So there. <clears throat> Interesting stuff, this grease. So spread it good around. And then we'll put in this uh, the inner helicoid and uh, since I also have it um, it comes off here I had it come off here I mean we have the index and my off mark here which is around and we can take the notes here and we have the the inner helicoid comes off after one revolution and almost and off at around 11 o'clock. So of course I have to put it on, it will see here, and um, catch the thread. Could be something I could just go up here and then move, move, move until it says click. Something like that here, and then put it all the way in and give it some good movement. Oh gosh, <laughs> where did it went? Okay, it's up here, and you can see now the the grease is actually spread around and. There is something here which we need to just wipe away in the bottom of the this ring because there's no need there is too much where it shouldn't be. So now it's in nice and, and fine and then we can just assemble the whole thing again. So, and this is something click. See this mark here, and my off mark here with the inner. So, there, and I goes all the way up to the index mark here. And then I take the other, I mean the inner helicoid. And I have my mark here. Oh, I know it's difficult to see, but somewhere here. And I just catch the thread, wiggle a little, and 
click and it goes in and of course I will end it up here with the two marks in line with the index mark and I know they sit correct so now I can put in the two focus key uh, I can just measure how long the distance is from the back to the inner helicoid which should be a little bigger and something like just have to align it and the almost measure which will be something 32.83 or so so you can see I'm actually back on track and can just uh, assemble it again and since I already set a mark uh, where the I mean this key, this focusing key, I mean helicoid key has to sit correct because it has number one but uh, before doing I mean put it in I will just give it a little grease just on the side here just a tiny amount so they will <coughs> move easily and then find the one scratch here which is this one and then it's actually close to the index mark so I mean it could be different in your situation but uh, this is just what I did and it goes in here so and it's just nice and fine and then I can just add one screw here and uh, to keep the screws in place I will use some Loctite 222 and of course they have um, added on a screw head in the past but I think I will add it on the uh, on the actual screw thread <coughs> I think it will work fine too now align the the key to the correct holes and we can just screw it in not tighten it yet because uh, you will need the other screw too And then it's good with a magnetized screwdriver. So there. <coughs> Tighten it. Good. Maybe there has to be some move uh, adjustment, but it looks really good. Much easier to actually move. And uh, then I can just take the other screw and do the exact same thing. Just load my screwdriver with the screw so it will be easier. <coughs> and then the focusing key here. And let's see if it do so. Where did my brush go here? And then add the key like this it can only sit in one position so there shouldn't be any problem with that 
Now add some thread lock. And then we have to lift it a bit little. <laughs> so Just okay, we can just set it a little closer here. So the last screw goes in and then we can just continue with the rest of the focusing ring, the aperture ring and the stop key or whatever name it has. So and how does it go? Wow. That's really good. Then tighten the key, uh, <laughs> tighten the screws for the key gently. And so here we are. Now, then I can add the, uh, the bar here uh, for the stop in each end. And I'll just use my JIS screwdriver. Eh. Put this on here. And since I have two marks here, there and there, um, it's easy to um, actually put it correct in where it should. So align it correct. Maybe you have to move it a little. But I think it's it looks pretty okay. So we can just take the other screws and put them in too. And now we can actually tighten the screws here. I can see there is a point here, not adding too much uh, thread lock because it could actually come into here. Let's see what happened. No, it's not really a problem in this case, but. Maybe that's why they add it on the screw head. I would think so. So now. Wow. <laughs> really good. <laughs> so now we can just continue with the rest of it. And say that's fine. We will just continue with the... Um, mm, I think we'll take the the focusing ring itself and put it on. And it's actually quite easy to determine where it should sit. The index mark is here and the infinity is here, so it should just pop over. Yeah, and we will find the um, correct screw there. And since I, in the beginning, set a mark in here, uh, and it should sit uh, in line with the uh, focusing ring, so I need to move this, just move it slightly over to there. And uh, say that's all fine tighten the screw so my focusing ring should sit correct oh, 
it's just like new well I don't know how it was <laughs> when it was new since it's quite old lens <laughs> and the last one and here we are wow it's really soft and fine buttery and then continue with the um, with the aperture ring and the two ball bearings and the spring so let's see I think I will just add a little grease on the uh, on the two holes where the spring sit because then it will not fall out and so the steel ball will also sit there and just a tiny one in here hmm. Oh gosh, <laughs> come on little fellow, now bloody hair, <clears throat> and then add the other spring, just put it in, sometimes those spring they just fly away, <laughs> and then you have to find them again oh come on okay we do so so there <clears throat> just a little amount of, <clears throat> of grease to actually hold the uh, steel ball in place <clears throat> when I put the uh, when I put the aperture ring on so there nice and fine and the other one goes in so and everything is actually ready to come in um, and I think maybe it's wrong but I would actually add a little grease in here just to make the aperture more easy to move it should just be a little tiny amount <clears throat> I would guess it's fine and now put the uh, the aperture ring on this pin here has to go all the way here in this gap so it should be quite easy to put it on hopefully we have the lock pin here I think it should be set on like this and hopefully so so one have to <coughs> push it down on this side here and then uh, <coughs> draw a little here and then push it on and then here we are Wow, great, really great. So, and we just place a few screws that need to come in. Also, this uh, this bar here, plate, don't know what the name is, but it has to sit here. It can only sit there. 
and we add a little screw here. Mm. The longest one, uh, maybe we'll take the shortest one here. <laughs> the shortest one has to sit here on the on the one end, it will say here, and the longer one in the other end. So there. Okay, they have used some thread lock, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. Now tighten it gently and then we need this bloody little pin <laughs> uh, with a tiny spring on. So I will just add a little grease on this uh, hole here and simply put in this tiny pin and the little spring. Don't miss it. <laughs> so, and it goes in here. There was another bloody here. Okay, so now we're actually back again. <clears throat> Maybe we'll just add a tiny amount of grease here just to put it, let it stay there. So then we can just uh, let's see yeah I think we'll just put in the the lens assembly and um, there is a spring um, a screw here and as I store I mean I said in the beginning there are two different screws here sit in the front. It will say the one that sits here is this shape as I see it. Um, and the other one of course is this shape. And it has to sit with the uh, nameplate, not the nameplate, but the front ring sits. So just put this in and uh, set a uh, retaining ring on. So this tiny screw here has to go in here, in this gap here. So we can just, well, well we could actually just set it to near end so it will be easier to put it in. something like there and here we have it <clears throat> and then I can add the retaining ring for that just drop it in there <clears throat> and then with a lens tool compass whatever tool you have simply screw it in fine thread which will be there. Simply screw it in. <clears throat> well, I could have used some uh, thread lock on this one, but I mean, <clears throat> to me, it's not necessary. <clears throat> so, uh, because yeah, that's my just my own lens, so I'll not do anything. Wow, the focusing is so good. Great. Now, then I can just add the little screw here on the front. Where's my little screws on here? And then put it in here. T 
tighten it gently and then add the front ring and the front retaining ring so this gap here is going where this little screw is you will see say something like here there's also a mark here that goes in line with the index mark here so just catch it there put the <coughs> this uh, retaining ring on and just need another tool <laughs> which is uh, just catch the thread or there it is screw it in and tighten it good so and then we can just flip it over and uh, Remember the little spring here, the little pin. So when we put on the the uh, mount, just need to set the length to 22. Wow, the aperture ring is much softer and really good. Now put the lens to near end, I mean near end, put it to infinity and then have it in that position here this pin here has to be locked all the way up to here as we see here it will lock up to here <coughs> and this one um, actually has to stay there because if there's, if there's too much tension uh, when you put on this pin to this fork uh, it's it will be a little tricky so now we can just put it on and uh, find the screw holes where they should sit and it actually sit where it should because the little lock pin where is it? This tiny lock pin <coughs> is sitting correct. So we cannot actually move the mount. And then we just miss the three screws. Just a little thread lock. And don't tighten it. Good yet and then this screw here and the last one so we can just move the the lock the breech lock ring here and tighten the screws good so So, uh, something is wrong here. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, did I did, didn't I set it correct? Uh, let's just get it off again. Well, it sometimes happens. <laughs> I think I know what's wrong. Take it off. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> this one is fine as we can move the aperture here. So 
So we just need to put this on again. And doing so, there. But it so. Where is the lock position? There's something wrong. Gosh. <laughs> okay. Can just move this a little, put it back in again. <clears throat> Looks like this one has been bent a little. We just try again. Put this. Uh, what about? Okay, should sit there. And uh, I can lock this. The pin is there. And. Then put this in. Something is. Oh gosh. I know. I know. I know. So there. <clears throat> and it shouldn't be up to. this there and this one has to say to go up there and is it correct there yeah the top here should sit in line with this one and the uh, There we just push this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's fine. <coughs> Something was just out of alignment and uh, well, it happened. I was not proper enough to with the alignment of the of this pin and the uh, how to aperture lever. <laughs> and the last screw here. So it is. Wow. That's really good. Just like having a new lens. And then add this uh, nameplate. Find the thread. Click. And <clears throat> tighten the nameplate. And then we are back on track. So if I log it and then put on my 22, put on my my um, back cap here, so and everything should actually work pretty good. Oh gosh, <laughs> that's great. So, that's fine. 
that's really really good and now it works as it should and have really good um, soft and fine focus so that was all for me so hope you can use the content and uh, yeah that's all bye bye